Hello, 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 hello. Um, thank hey. you for Hi joining friends. us. Hello. Hey. hey. <laughs> What's up? Um, today we are here for the book troop live show for the month of July, <laughs> where we read <laughs> The Only One Left by Riley Sager. Whoa! Oh, look. Craziness. Mm. That's crazy. Oh. Okay, I, have I have a few. I have a few. No, I have I a few. <laughs> I almost I had to get different colors because I was running out. Mom just went totally ham with the tabs. Well, I'm trying but... to be on top of it, but you know. Yeah. You know, so like <clears throat> yeah, so we have read the new Riley Sager. I hope you've all read the new Riley Sager. I'm sure so many people have. It's <laughs> it's a very popular one for mm -hmm. this time of year. So um, thank you all so much for joining us. I already see so many friends in the chat, um, and <laughs> I would love to know. Um, well, let me just introduce. Who are these people? Yeah, you're you're probably watching this like. Who are they? <laughs> I mean, probably not, but I've known these two way back when they were born. So oh, it's been a wow. long time. You've known us like our yeah. whole lives. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. crazy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. No. Um, no, Rachel's mom. channel is linked, by the way, down below for anybody wondering. Rachel does have a channel. Yeah. It's I'm not, not a booktuber. We're wearing our gear. So I can get that out here. Yeah, Rachel is mm -hmm. the designer. Oh. I am the designer. Yes. The designer behind Honey. all oh of the merch. Gosh. Yeah. So yeah. beautiful stuff. Babe. Got some Honestly. talent over Honestly. here. Come on now. But yeah, um, in case it was not obvious, this is the mom. Mom. <laughs> this is the sister. <laughs> the mom, the sister. The mom, the sister. <laughs> the daughter. It should just say Gabby and the mom and the sister. <laughs> I know. Let's not make this confusing. Let's go. Rachel and, or, oh, oh, God. I just thought they would want to know your name, you know, but Gabby and mom and sister. <laughs> okay, that I'm works. Sister. I'm just a sister. And younger sister. Um, I'm not oh, a yeah, yeah. <laughs> No one gets that. Yeah, that would be easier. That she's older. Yeah, what the hell? It would be easier. <laughs> but I'm so sorry. Okay. Sweet. Um, well, now that we've got that cleared up, um, just in case you were confused, yeah. Um, I would love to know before we get started if you have read the book and you're here to like hang out and talk spoilers and you read along with us this month. I would love if you would put a black heart in the chat just so I can get a visual. And then if you have not yet read it, um, maybe you could put what color did I just say? Like oh, a tanks red heart. Did I ever say red? No, I said black. She said you can do a red heart if you haven't read it yet. Just so I can get a visual. Um, the beginning of this will be totally spoiler those free. Are different color. Um, that's okay. Yeah, black if you've read it. Red if you haven't. It's fine if you haven't. We weren't. We aren't going to be talking about spoilers right away. Um, and then while they're doing that, if Rachel would want to give us a dramatic reading of the premise, because do you guys want a dramatic reading? I think they would want a dramatic <laughs> reading because. Um, because for those of you who haven't read it and you might not know what it's about, Rich is gonna let you know. <laughs> I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the distance. Um, I have a gate up. He can't come up here. Anyways, all right. Um, <clears throat> okay. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with a rope. <laughs> wow, what a, what a, what a start. Okay. Oh my God. Now yeah. reduced to a schoolyard chant, the hope from Oh God! Oh my God! I'm sorry. <laughs> now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murder shocked the Maine coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killings, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set a foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. Mm. Stabbed her father with a knife took her mother's happy life. Ooh. It's now 1983 and home health aide Kit McDeer arrives at a decaying hope's end to care for Lenore after a previous nurse fled in the middle <laughs> of the night. Ooh. Yeah, all right. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenore was rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by typing out sentences on an old typewriter. Ooh. One night, Lenore uses it to to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me, mm -hmm. Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. As Kit helps Lenora write about these events leading to the Hope's family massacre, it becomes clear there's more to the tale than people know. Ooh. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, <laughs> Kit starts to suspect Lenora might not be telling the truth. 
and, <laughs> and <laughs> that the seemingly and. harmless woman in her in her care could be more dangerous than she first thought. Ta da! Oh, Whoa. dun dun dun! I know, right? That bravo, was good. bravo. Ooh. That's great. Slag down. Breathe. Like, Are, you Breathe. Are you hooked? Are you hooked? I feel like yeah. I should make a TikTok account of just doing dramatic readings of every book and then they can get hooked and then they read it. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Should. Authors should pay me. Yeah. yeah. More, we get the money. <laughs> you should, honestly. All right. All right. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was so good. If they haven't been convinced now, then I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah, good job, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Yes. What can I say? Um, sweet. Well, that's cool. Um, is Obi at home? I think he's at the gym. Should we just like let Tang? That's what I'm saying. Like, do you want him to come over? No, can you guys hear Tang barking? Can, can you hear home? Tang? <laughs> he's poor guy. Can he'll, you just hear keep he'll just keep barking the whole time. Oh. I think it'll make you nervous, oh. babe. Hey, like, you I'll might just as well just, I'll just grab him. him. I'll just yeah. grab him. He'll be like slightly less annoying. If he's not yeah. barking, and Rachie, <laughs> she can't think <laughs> while her baby's barking. It's I like, can't even think when he's barking. Yeah, he's annoying. So it's better just to have him in. <laughs> he's literally like, let me. <laughs> he wants to see her. Okay, well at least goes, you guys can hear. Me? <laughs> can't hear sweet take. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you'll definitely get some tank ASMR now. I'll oh, here, here we go. I'm on now he's head. crazy. Where am I? Now he's crazy because. Oh, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Now the tank's here. Now it's a party. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicole said you should do one of those TikToks where you pretend it's a real story yeah. until the end and then you reveal that it's the plot of a book. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. And that was a lot, a big description of the book. I mean, yeah, it was a very detailed I think, um, description. I'm kind of glad I didn't read that. <laughs> I don't read the covers, you know? Mm-hmm. The star has arrived. <laughs> yeah, the star has oh, arrived. Yeah, be serious. The book true mascot is here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, if you hear some heavy breathing, it's taking. <laughs> it's um, Rachel going to get him. <laughs> okay, sweet. Well, now that we know what it's all about and what we're here to talk about. Hi. Hi, <laughs> His little face. Hi, buddy. <laughs> um, so now that we know what we're here for, um, would we like to discuss our ratings? Yes. Um, if yeah, you guys I'd like can... to talk about finally talk about this book with my girls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you can be so kind and hi, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Are we boring hi. you already? He's a bitch, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> this book was a one. Star. I know. I need to add Tank to the list of names. It's only right. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, who's this? And sister and. Frenchie. Oh, if I can type. And Frenchie. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, if you would be so kind as to let me know your rating out of five stars, I would just love to know, love to get a visual. I feel like this one is really all over the board with ratings, but for the most part, I've seen this one get some pretty higher ratings, especially in comparison to the last few Riley Sager books or the last two or so. So while all the peoples are letting us know their ratings, um, do we want to reveal at the same time? Or what do we want to do? You're the hot, you're the host, you're the mostest, you tell me. <laughs> I think we should all reveal at the same time. Like a three, two, one, boom. And just hold up, fingers. <laughs> hold up our okay. fingers, yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna reveal our ratings with our fingers we don't all at the same time because we don't know how each other mm -hmm. feels about it. So okay, ready? Sure. Three, two, one, four stars. <gasps> Is that a five? <laughs> five stars? Yeah. Oh shit. I might, Riley does it for me every time. Oh shit, what? Yeah. What? Damn. I think if you look last year, it was also, it had to be up there because all Dang. his books, his books get better for me anyway. It's okay, easier so without spoilers, why was it five stars? There's just so much you have. What convinced you? What was like the, oh, it's five stars. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a spoiler, so I can't <laughs> <say>. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. I'm not good at like going. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, why was it four stars? Um. Yeah, Rachel. <laughs> I would have to say like it kept me hooked for the most part. Um, there's like one twist at the end I didn't like that took off a star, but for the most part I was like pretty interested and like, I don't know. 
it was like fast paced and it kind of it was interesting. I love a good mystery. Like I needed to know what happened, you know. So yeah. Well, I think fast paced was after 140. Yeah, pages. that's that's kind of what I meant. I I also did like knock it down the star because it was very slow. I feel it like it was. It's like, is this are you guys finishing this or are you DNFing it? Because I don't know. That's a lot for me to read and still not be for yeah. me. And I'm you guys are all seasoned, so I don't know what you felt about that, but yeah. made up for it. Why would you give me more? Um, yeah. yeah, I gave it four because I do think that the beginning was a bit slow for me or like the buildup was slow. Like I didn't mind the atmosphere. Like I thought the atmosphere was really good and I was really invested in the characters pretty much right from the start, which is good because the last Riley Sager book, I couldn't really stand the main character, but this, I actually like this main character a lot. Um, I don't know. I, I did find it interesting right away, but I do agree. It was pretty slow up until almost the end and then i feel like at the end there was so much packed into that ending that was like it made it a little bit feel like whiplash to read mostly in a good way i think but there were definitely Pants. a twist or two that i was like Gosh. E I remember e exactly like the ending for the most part was a fun time but there were just a few things that i was like mm -hmm. i could have done without that yeah you know? same. and so you get so. to describe that later because yeah. i would really like to know Oh, yeah. No, we'll definitely get into all of the spoilers mm -hmm. in just a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the ending is a little bit big time whiplash. And that's really fun for the most part because it's kind of expected at this point from Riley Sager to kind of have like a really shocking, just chaotic, wild ending. Um, but speaking of Riley Sager, I would love to know, um, you know, because we have read all almost books. all of Riley oh, Sager's book. Oh. I mean, I've read all of his books. Mom's I read, I think, all of them except for Final Girls, maybe. Um, and then I know Rachel's read all of them except for final roles and she's currently reading the last time I lied mm -hmm. um but so I would love to know how does this Sager compare to his others for you and which ones are still like your top favorites after this reading I feel like it, it I think does it I feel like it doesn't really compare in to like the other books I feel like this one kind of stands on its own because it feels like a an old mystery Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other ones kind of feel, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, no, the, I get what you're saying. What I is that? What saying. Wanna... No. Yeah, because all the other ones aren't really like that old, right? Because, like, this one goes back to 1929. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives you um, like, um, it's like a classic thriller. I guess Survive the Night kind of feels like a classic thriller because it, it's like movie, it's like, like, it feels like it's a movie and it's like, yeah, it takes it, place it, in the 90s. It's like a mad, like, I feel like Survive the Night feels like it's directed by. Alfred Hitchcock or something. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what I'm thinking. But I yeah. definitely feel like this one, like, it really sets the tone. It's like 1920s. It's like Halloween. It's dark. There's... Another house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I definitely feel like it's different though. Like, I feel like I would give this book to somebody that likes like classic thrillers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other books I feel like are more modernized and like more like quick with Cur it. Current. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know. I don't feel like this one really compares to the other one. I'm still going to only 83. And then my favorite is still Home Before Dark and Lock Every Door. I think nice. it's. Uh, I also really liked House Cross Lake, but. <laughs> I think it's a mix of all of them, to be honest. There's a lot of, you know. Yeah, like I could tell it's his writing. Mm -hmm. Like they all similarly write the same. Right. But I feel like as like for setting and like. It just feel like it's different. That's what I love about him because he's so easy to, because I don't read that much, 400 pages, you know, and <laughs> he had me, you know, intrigued the whole time, except for the first, very first part. Maybe that was, it was, because um, I didn't understand it. You Which know? one is your favorite, Riley Singer? <sighs> I think everyone that I read, the next one is, this one so far, I think, I mean, I, I loved, I loved all his books. He's the one author that I would definitely go to, to, to read a book, mm -hmm. but, um, so this yeah. one, this one's your favorite. I think so. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But I always rate his books high yeah. and I finish them. So that, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, I mean, he's, he, he keeps me like intrigued, like I said, so. I know. I think this one ranks like fourth for me. I think 
uh, Lock Every Door is still my number one. I'm just trash for that book. Like New York, creepy vibes. I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. And then Home Before Dark is definitely like my second favorite. Um, I love the Haunting of Hill House vibes in that one. Yeah. Same. Yeah, it's just great. And then third, I think, would be The Last Time I Lied. Because I also love the yeah. like the late, the summer camp that vibes in the lake. Year. No, that was no. that was the one that I had you read that we didn't read that one for the book club. Oh, okay. I'm um, reading that one right now. Yeah, Rachel's reading that one now. Okay. And then this one would be fourth for me. And then after that would be Final Girls, would be The House Across the Lake and Survive the Night for me. Um, somewhere in there. I don't know my rankings. But yeah. yeah. I yeah. think this one would be like fourth for me. It's like a middle of the road. It's not mm -hmm. like my favorite thing he's ever published, but it's definitely an improvement for me, at least over the last um two that he's come out with. So um yeah. so yeah. Cool to know. Yeah, very cool to nice. know that it. Um, I I feel like Riley Sager at this point, he's like back on track for me. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what he does next because yeah, now absolutely. I'm feeling like, oh my god, maybe he's... he can write my next fave of all time. Yeah. You know. So. I um, also love that trope of like, um, something happened here, and you're trying to figure out yeah, what happened vibes. to the town, yeah. and everybody else knows but you, and mm -hmm. and it goes back from you know old 1929 to to 80s, and 80s is the best, and it's yeah. like you know you're trying to connect the dots and then there's different characters that you have to try to he really really that. foreshadows well too like i love mm -hmm. his writing mm -hmm. style because i love how it kind of goes back and forth between the time of what he's talking it about makes it and our character now and yeah, yeah. like i told gabby when That's i was reading i was like oh my god this kind of reminds me if like seven husbands of evelyn hugo was like horror <laughs> yeah because like the way he was writing it felt like that same writing style like he yeah. took from that um i mean obviously it's not like like seven husbands of evelyn hugo at all but like i felt like the style yeah. of writing yeah i know i agree sydney i almost wish that there was a little bit more of the 80s vibes though because i feel like i kept forgetting that the present day chapters were taking place in the 80s Right. Like I would have wanted even a little bit more like 80s atmosphere. Um, but I agree that I do think the book had really great atmosphere. I wanted to ask, like, how did you feel about like the writing style in terms of like going back and forth between like the present day in the 1980s and then getting those like flashback chapters and like the typewriting chapters? Like, was that something that you enjoyed going back and forth between the two? Or did you find it like confusing at all? Or like, no, no, no. I liked it. It was definite. It wasn't like you, you would have to. I almost prefer explain. that because I feel like it would have been 10 times more boring. Yeah. If it, and if harder. It, needed, and it harder. needed to keep it, keep it interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I actually really love, like, I think it added so much to me to like the creepy atmosphere of the book, the idea of this woman who's like elderly and she can't speak and she can't talk for herself. And the idea of her literally just like typing on this typewriter and like, you know, typing creepy things. Cause like she'd be typing things like that are kind of creepy being like, you know, giving them the feeling that somebody's watching them or like somebody's in the room with them. Like, oh my God, it was making me so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And like the way that he wrote about this house that was like built on the that side was, of this that cliff. Was like, and like it the kept house. on going throughout the book. Yeah, yeah it was, was like, like tilted. In, it was like uh, tilted and weird. And like and when you walk uh, from room to room, you, you feel like, like you're, you feel like you're in the house and I always get out. Yeah, what I just I liked that? the way that he wrote about the house. It really felt like the house was like its own character uh -huh. in the book, and it just contributed yeah. so much to like that gothic kind of atmosphere right. that I really liked. Right. Um, so I thought that was it. Great. Felt like um, Lemony Snicket, the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was mm -hmm. like on the cliff, like in Lemony Snicket. Yeah, like you can just visualize this. it. Series yeah. of unfortunate events. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and the, how he described everything about it. I think was really um, what brought you deeper into it because you you felt like you were in the house. Mm -hmm. I, I did. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know why I'm staying here, mm -hmm. yeah. but I know why people leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Let me. I know. Let me see if there's anything else I can talk about without spoilers. Um, mm -hmm. I know <laughs> this book has, is all about um, that, so I'm um, not saying anything. Well, with, more. were there any red hearts? There was a few red hearts, okay. yeah. But I mean, without spoilers, um, was there anything that you disliked about the book that you can talk about without spoilers or no? Um, I kind of thought like so like the whole beginning is really just Kit like taking care of Lenora. Um the, and pace, I, the pacing was just a little bit the slow. pacing and like her just like taking care of like doing her job like I was bored. It was like repetitive kind of <laughs> and keep on talking about mm -hmm. her 
her um, previous job and situation. Like, mm-hmm. but first, I mean, it's like wasn't about, like terrible. First, but, it's about yeah. Kit, you know, really forming that um, character, and then it moves on to building up mm-hmm. more. Like yeah. that's as much as I. Yeah, so we're going to jump into spoilers. Um, we've been live for about 20 minutes now, and there is so much to discuss with this book, spoiler-wise. So um, if you have not yet read it or you do not want to be spoiled, now is the time to head out. Thank you so much for joining us for this part of the live show. I really appreciate it, and I hope that we can have convinced you to check this one out because I do think it's a fun time. I think it's Even worth- if it's a little bit chaotic and ridiculous by the end, I think it's a fun book, and it's worth reading and worth checking out. So we're going to jump into some spoilers because what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> oh so, oh my God, I don't even- You've okay. been warned. Yeah, you've been warned. Spoilers oh, incoming. Here we are. Bing, 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 bing. Here we are. Oh, wow. Finally, um, we get mm, to talk about it. Yes. It's so, been so hard. Okay. First things first. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. First things first, I guess. Um, How do we feel about the plot twist that- which like, one? I know. Okay. <laughs> How many? Okay. The plot twist <laughs> that the point, like the chapters that we're reading from, and this woman is it's not Virginia? even Lenora. It's Virginia. I oh my god! I so literally I wrote thought... in the book and put, "Wait, what?" And I put, <laughs> yeah. "Hold on, my brain." Yeah, right. Because I was like, "Did I or did I not?" Because I was okay. I read it really <laughs> late at night, and I thought I was like tripping. Uh-huh. Like I thought I was slipping into yeah. like abyss, but I was like. Did that just say yeah. a name change? Like I, it's like yeah. you really have to pay attention when you're yeah. reading it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, you yeah. don't, when that happens. you can go to the next chapter and just like you I know go back and I have to go back. What? what and did so I, I was like, uh, did I read that right? Like I yeah. actually stopped for a second. I looked at my boyfriend and I was like, <laughs> and he's like, what? And I was like, hold on, <laughs> hold <laughs> on. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, that was a good twist. That was probably like my favorite. Then yeah, and mm-hmm. then then you're just looking back at the whole story and see if you missed anything that was building up to say that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's what makes it so fun. I like the part where it really got to me, like when she started typing. You know, that communication mm-hmm. um, was brilliant. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Riley really, I thought it was a great you know, plug with throughout that wove throughout the book. Mm-hmm. You know? And when it they revealed the, the twist that she was pregnant, I immediately was counting. Oh, I know. Well, if it was Kit, because I was like doing the math in my head. I was like, can it be Kit? I know. My first thought when she said she was pregnant was that it was Kit. But then, I, but then when they revealed it was a boy, I was like, wait. it's Yeah, I was, like, I was thinking like in my head, I was thinking like, oh, the dad and the mom, like, Cause I was like, oh my god, wait! This whole thing that happened with her mom, like her mom got killed into her thing, and I was like, no, like that has to be her mom, like it yeah. can't be her. But but then I was like, oh, like what if they um, like made this deal with like Lenora and like she got adopted by her parents and like this whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. So like I was thinking like, holy shit, like she got adopted, blah blah. blah. Oh gosh, I'm into it. No, no, think. I think um. I don't know, Carter, why? I mean, yeah. what was his whole thing? And so they're talking about the boy. I'm like, hello, he's right there. Yeah, he's got to be was just a like character to throw you off and make you think that I he think, was involved, yeah. but he was it never worked. really involved. Yeah. yeah. I heard somewhere that somebody was saying that there's seven plot twists in this book. I believe it. <laughs> and I know, and I was trying to think of every single one because I'm like, I guess the first, well, the first plot twist, right, is when you find out that the woman that Kit was taking care of was her mother oh, yeah. who died. That was like the oh. first plot twist. And that was right in the first like 60 pages or so. Yeah. Yeah. And then, she was like, I, me and Lenore having common, we both killed our moms. Yeah. That's I was what like, I was saying. Yeah, I was both, like, oh, oh. They both oh. killed their moms. I okay, had so that, that was the notes. first little thing. Mm-hmm. And then there was the plot twist that Mary was actually dead or whatever, like, because you were kind of wondering, like, oh, did she leave? Oh, uh, nobody like, just leaves. No, it's people have been killed I in that house. I knew Mary was dead. I, mean, I knew yeah. she was in the water. I knew she was there. Yeah. yeah. Because prior to that, um, Kit was having problems, like, where she almost fell. hmm You know? Yeah. But I, I don't know, like, how, um, I'm probably jumping the gun, but the suitcase handle or whatever, 
how that all got, you mm -hmm. know, because they supposedly did a whole search, you know, Detective Vic and all those people. And then she goes out there and, and then finds that. Mm -hmm. That was kind of weak on me because I'm well, come on mm -hmm. now. You mm -hmm. get these other guys didn't get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But maybe because they didn't see a suitcase, but you'd still want to link it to something. You know, yeah. it's evidence. But anyway, that was and the detective was a douchebag in general. <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of the yeah. worst. Um, yeah. And then the I feel like the next big twist was that her dad was Ricky. Yeah, that her dad that was, was Ricky. Huge was a twist and yeah. then that uh that her dad was the one who killed mary mm -hmm. and her dad being involved in it yeah that was a whole bunch of twists in there Within and then that yeah oh uh, i'm like trying to remember all of them because then there's the twist at the very end about how you know virginia was essentially faking her disabilities oh, yeah. the entire time i was like <laughs> i kind of predicted that because um not the entire time, but that she. What predictions did you jot down? Like, well, I, I, my one is that um, that she was faking it, you know, because people kept on seeing a silver-haired woman in a white dress, and then all these things were missing and um, changing around and that kind of stuff. But then they made it sound like Archie was it Archie? Archie was the Archie chef, was yeah. the chef that was also tied into the. He was there the 60 something years. So when they throw stuff like that out, then you're thinking, okay, but I did not know it was, he was up there. Mm -hmm. you know? God, that would have been interesting. The detective being Ricky. Mm. I didn't even think of something oh. like that. That would have been nuts. But the fact that you were saying last night oh, when we were talking Richard. that there was two. Yeah, I know. Okay. Was anybody else fucking confused by this? Yeah, I didn't even know. Oh my God, I, didn't I didn't even, even know until yeah. after I was, ex I was talking to my friend Brittany about the book and I was like, why is Ricky just like a hoe sleeping yeah. with everyone? Yeah. Like he's literally with Archie and he's mm -hmm. getting this girl knocked up and she's yeah. like, no, dude, there's two Rickies, bruh. <laughs> I and I was like, wait, what? And I know. it's Ricardo, Ricky. He's the one that's with Archie, the cook. He's the one who's gay. And then there's Ricky Patrick, Patrick Ricky. He's the one who's the dad of Kit. And then he's the one who knocked up. Oh, and that's Roy a whole when they were younger. Yeah, so like, I mean, huh? I mean, yeah. And yeah, but and then the detective's dad. name was Richard. That's why people were confused because there's a Ricky, Ricky, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> there's three, there's like three essentially. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't I, realize that. I definitely <laughs> like knocked it down a star for her faking her disability. And I also hated the last page. Like, yeah. Oh, Kit just goes and she looks and she's gone and she just went to Paris and lived her life or whatever like that was kind of uh shocking. yeah like yeah. Danny Cage is like save I, I your ass it. yeah yeah and sorry just to explain because there's some people saying they're so confused by that yeah I was too because Ricardo he was the groundskeeper like he was the one working at the you know house and he was the one Ricardo was the one who had the romance with Archie and they were two different people and then Patrick was just called Ricky as a nickname but then I guess they were both nicknamed Ricky. But there was two Rickies. Like, yeah. Well, how did that get past me? I don't know. But I like literally was so confused, and I thought it was the same person. So yeah, if anybody else thought that too, you're not alone. And I we're about to like, in the book. What, what was that? So I could go back and like Fuck see it. if I can. I, don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I know. just because I didn't even know when no, I read it. I no. didn't know until later on. And then I was like, oh, and then, uh, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, um, agree totally with what Rachel just said. Um. The whole thing about her faking her illness for literally like 50 fucking years just to get back at her sister. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's That's insane. ridiculous. And like, because the whole point of it, right, was that she wanted to do it because she's like, my sister thought she won. But like, fuck her. Like, yeah. She was doing but it like, because she's what? like, yeah, she's like, so now you're going to have to take care of me in this house forever. But like, your life is miserable. You never leave the room. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? You get up to do this and that. But. I'm surprised she could actually walk if she doesn't get up much. Yeah, I well, yeah. So I hated that ending. I hated like just the whole last page where she's like, "Then I'm with my Jesse, my granddaughter, and, and whatever." And I was like, "Okay, I do not care about the twist that Jesse's her granddaughter." That was like weird to me. I was just like, at that point, I didn't care anymore because I was like, "Okay, <laughs> what is going on? Like, just end the book, mm -hmm. you know? Like, we've had enough." And then I hated 
the one where they both like her dad and Lenora both go in the house and just yeah. die with the house. Oh my god, yeah, that scene drove me. You're nuts kidding. Too. Like, okay. <laughs> The whole thing was that her dad was It's like, like survive the night shit. Like, it's so dramatic. No, like, he was so passionate about trying to kill her, right? And they were just like, mm. and then I don't remember what was said, but it was just like a moment. And then they were like, no, I'm going to die with the house. Like, they and both you. decided to huh? die together. And I know, you. like, wait, what? It was like they flipped a switch so fast and just decided suicide. And it was like so house. casually thrown in there that the dad, the dad was like, oh, by the way, I killed your mom. Yeah. Don't yeah. worry about it. Sorry. Yeah. I was like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah. I guess before you die, you're gonna say yeah, like, something I, like that. I don't like, know. I don't know. Like, I just feel like it was so um I think they both It's one of those like annoying tropes that I hate when the author wants you to still really like the main character. So they mm-hmm. just casually dump that shit on you. Yeah, like, like, oh, they... by the way, the dad killed the mom, so the dad's the villain. Yeah, she's only not the dad's the villain. The mom the kid <laughs> is like perfect in every way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like kid is like a saint. Yeah. We want you to still like kid. So it's like, ah, okay. Like But I think I was reading it at the at the end is that they both just knew that they screwed up and their life is, you know, the daughter it is and Kit doesn't like have respect. Like I definitely get dad, but she kinda yeah, like, I definitely get Lenora, like, just wanting to kill herself because, mm-hmm. like, now the whole world's going to know that Virginia is, you know. I just thought that like, was I just, twist. yeah. Miss Baker. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. You know? Oh. And then it was thrown out that she had a son, like, you know, the baby that got taken away, mm-hmm. and she was trying to, like, hunt for the son. Yeah. And then he just died, like, two years ago yeah. in Canada yeah. or something. And I was like, oh. I yeah. thought it was Carter the whole time. I thought, well, the, the, it's Carter. He, he wanted on... you to think it was Carter. Yeah. But. Yeah. So that was. Um, but I mean, just the whole twist about the sister thing. And then I had to go back. I even call, talked to Rach and I just go, what is going on here? Because I don't want to I don't want to go towards the end of the book. Still not sure about what that twist was, because mm-hmm. I know that was a big part that gets you to the end. Because mm-hmm. it was for me, it was shocking. So I don't know. That was, I had no idea, but even still I had to wrap my head around. Okay. What, you know, who's what? I feel like, um, with, for like mom, I feel like, uh, if there's a huge plot twist that you didn't see coming, you're going to give it a heart, just a big rating because you were like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Do you actually like the plot twist though? I thought it was good. Cause I feel like every book you're like, Oh my God, five stars, huge plot twist. Well, I'm thinking, but I'm like, um, maybe, did, you, did you actually like you liked that plot twist? Yeah, but I didn't. You like that she faked it for fifty years? I liked you like that. Well, like, I was like, uh, right they, on? <laughs> not so much that that, but it was that they um that he got me with that. You know, so that's what I'm saying. So that's yeah, why you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you well, get yeah, that because I mean, I mean, someone to go to that length and stuff, but for her. The, the part that I didn't like was that I guessed it early on that she she wasn't um, an invalid. Yeah. You know, and then I was thinking, gosh, because I've kept that in my mind the whole time. I'm going, oh, it's her. I was thinking, like, in Jesse's audiobooks that she was, like, fucking telling her Telling stuff. her shit. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. who the fuck? Let me hear those. I mean, she uh-huh. does, right? Like that, that was does she yeah at the like end or something towards she them. like only reads a little bit of the book but then she just like talks to her about like her life or like what she's up to that's what like, i'm saying she was given her information yeah i think she was you know yeah okay okay <laughs> that's what i thought because i was like um yeah you read yeah <laughs> um i know i wanted to, like i don't know if you guys jotted down any predictions but i just thought it was interesting because i i had a couple predictions like i wrote down on page 126 i wrote Miss Baker is her sister. Like I wrote down, I thought Miss Baker was Virginia. Like I was convinced mm. that Miss Baker was Virginia. And then obviously it was later on revealed that Miss Baker is actually Lenora and Lenora is Virginia. So like I was kind of on to something. Remember they were saying something at yeah. the end uh, and about like why isn't she Miss Baker? Because she's not married. Yeah. And she said, Well, I prefer to be Mrs. for I don't know. It just sounds more professional or something like that. But I had no idea that she was Lenora. Yeah. 
that oh. was like a stretch of my mind and I had to go. I know oh I knew gosh, she was suspicious to... too because of the way that she was just so like um adamant about being like she cannot leave the room and mm -hmm. she has a very strict you know whatever and the way that it was revealed that Miss Baker and her had some kind of deal that when she passed she would like inherit the house yeah I was like okay um she's a little yeah, shady so true. I didn't trust Miss Baker and also um I also didn't realize that there was two Miss Bakers <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah well, there's Mrs. the real Miss Baker and then Lenora's Miss Baker. But yeah. because Mrs. Mrs. Baker was there but the Ms. whole Baker time. But Miss Baker took the son to Canada. So Miss Baker fled when the murders happened, yeah. right? The real Miss Baker. Ms. She Baker. took her baby to yeah, Canada. And so that's the thing, too, is because I'm going, okay, where did everybody go? Because, <laughs> oh, 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 and the other thing that was weird. <laughs> they fled the thing, scene. Yeah, I don't know um, how this came out or whatever, but how um okay i just lost this hold on <laughs> <laughs> i had it really good it was really good i'll, I'll get back to it yeah see so it was the yeah. real miss baker who had the affair with lenore's yeah because she was because she was like she was fucking the dad <laughs> and then because she was fucking the dad like i guess virginia was like oh my god teach me your ways or whatever right isn't that what she okay. said and she's like i need you to help me I'm like pregnant and shit. And she was like, what? And then she took a baby to Canada. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, the real Miss Baker did have an affair with Virginia's dad. Mm -hmm. Or was it Lenora's dad? I they, know, didn't have, I know. they didn't have the same dad, right? Yeah, yeah, they had different true. dads. Yeah. Did they ever reveal whose dads were who, what? I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, but, but before the thing, I, the thing I was I put that to, memory out of my head. I don't know. The, the, the thing that um, uh, I was going to say before was, okay, so she supposedly, you think she died, you, you know, right away, but when it said in the book six months later, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my god, what? Hmm. Yeah, like she was. You know, that part was like I, I just had. There's so many things like that that make me think that I have to go back, try to try well, to and, understand. Yeah, how it said that Virginia like had stepped up on that chair and hung herself off the chandelier or whatever. And then Lenora She's... moved the chair so that the police wouldn't think it was a suicide or something. And yeah. I was like, why would you do that? Because then yeah. the police will think it's you, right? You know, and yeah. then it, when it was revealed that she was in a coma for six months, I was like, oh my God, she seems bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I thought she was I know. somebody well, else. I thought Miss Baker <laughs> was Virginia that whole time. I was like, because there's no way. But of course, it would make sense that Virginia was the one in bed because she was the one who was hung for, you know, whatever. Yeah. She Like, she lost her ability. Or, or was she even actually lost her ability? I don't know. Probably not. But <laughs> I think she was, like, temporarily uh, yeah. disabled, right? Because, like, like, she was in a coma. So, like, the whole, this whole book, I'm just saying... Oh, Mr. Hope paid Lenora's dad to get rid of him, the baby. Yeah. Oh, so she, so he paid the, um, the original Miss Baker, Baker to take, to take him. Oh, yeah. I to understand. take Virginia's yeah. baby to Canada. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, interesting. I know I did write another prediction that I thought that Ricky a little bit was, of growing, oh <laughs> I know gosh. I took intense notes. Um, <laughs> I always do. But I wrote a prediction that I thought Ricky was still around. I thought he was the one creaking around in Lenora's room at night because when she kept saying she would like hear people walk or like somebody was walking in Lenora's room at night, I, it's obvious like, yeah, maybe it was her, you know, like Lenora walking yeah, around her room. I was kind of thinking. But I was also like, what if it's Ricky? Wasn't because it I thought also they were like Jesse and Archie and wasn't Ricky there sometimes? I know, yeah, but I thought it was like the OG Ricky, like the one that they were like, where did you go? But he was the one that ended up leaving with uh, Archie, Rick Ricardo. Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of got me at the end. I was like, what? I never saw that one coming. I know. I kind of, I also wanted the ghost of Virginia to be real. I was obsessed with the idea of that. I was like, so creepy. Mm -hmm. It was like her sister's like mm -hmm. haunting her. Like, yeah, that's ah. like, yeah. I was like terrified at the idea of that. So I almost kind of would have rather had that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, I, I, I agree. Like the idea of Virginia's ghost was really fun, but I kind of figured it out. I did write like that. I thought Virginia was not dead because of the way that they were talking about her. It was something that Archie said when he said something like, 
because oh my god it was something like kit said oh do you really think she like haunts the room and he was like that it was something that he said that made me think oh my god virginia's not dead yeah like, the way he responded to her i was like bitch please like oh my god it was so obvious and how he had a thing for her you know mm-hmm. and, and, and for her to find out that um kit to find out that he's been up there mm-hmm. you know all this time but i i was thinking too like who's um Who's Lenora's dad? I mean, there was something in there. It's like um, trying to figure out who's, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> just trying to figure out who's related to who. And <clears throat> because they would go back and forth on so much stuff like that. Yeah, that's such a good point, too, because the cop said he worked in their house for mm-hmm. like two summers or whatever before the murders happened. How would he not recognize that those are not the same people? That is so well, they're facts. old. And, well, I know, but yeah, but they're on. old, but, but, and, and, and they don't look alike. So they're they're old, and one is dead. Why would he think that? I don't well, know. I just I... yeah, that's uh, the detective wasn't all that good. Mm-hmm. He just and he kept on just like getting on her. I felt bad for her. Yeah, I was curious <laughs> to see if he would do a paranormal twist in this one. I was almost expecting it after you know like home before dark kind of vibes well, the house. Like, oh, yeah, well, you ghost. know a lot of stuff i was thinking too there's all those rooms that are locked and mm-hmm. that was you know jesse was showing when kit first came and i'm thinking okay so my mind's thinking stuff's gonna happen there or the the thing where they're saying they just left and didn't take anything with them you know um ricardo was it ricardo and then also um, Mary. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, um, just leaving that abruptly uh, after she, like I said, um, Kit like almost fell, you know, mm-hmm. and stuff. And, and then she's thinking, oh, you know, mm-hmm. that that could happen. I'm like, yeah. So isn't it? Oh, so people aren't combing the water, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, who are these? Well, yeah, how would they have not found Mary? Like, if it She's was so right there. obvious that she had like fallen, like, oh, wouldn't that be the first thing? They would the do? other thing is that the note. Mm-hmm. I liked how he 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 really started throwing things out there that that makes sense because she was. I didn't want to tell you, or you know, and um, but it was Lenore's note, right? It wasn't Mary's note. Yeah, but you didn't know it was that until later. Dude, you know? I thought um, that Ricky was killed by Miss Baker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Miss Dude, I had the most random. I was like, obviously, Lenora can walk. That's <laughs> why in her room there's somebody in there. I was like, she's moving. <laughs> um, I was like, Jesse's not reading her books. Fuck that. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. then, oh, God, what did I write? Yeah, it seems like Jesse was probably saying like something to her not reading the narrating a book Mm -hmm. and i'm like oh gosh don't don't find this because you know that's that it's going to reveal something and i was nervous about that i know one of my predictions was i wrote down that i thought archie is ricardo or that he's related to him (laughs) because i was like this archie guy i was like he keeps saying he's been here since the night of the murders and like nobody really knows like what he's up to so i thought he was actually ricky but turns out he was just fucking him Ooh. Ooh. so um, that's yeah. great for him um yeah. yeah what was the okay what was the best plot twist and the worst plot twist i think the best plot twist was lenora being virginia yeah. I thought that was a really cool twist, and I kind of saw it coming, but like not that way, no, like not the I way that it happened. Like, well, because I suspected Miss Baker wasn't who she said she was, and that was connected to like that twist. But I did not think for some reason that that was not Lenora. Like, so yeah. that was my favorite twist, and that was the most shocking for yeah. me. But my least favorite twist was the like I've been faking this for fifty years. Like, oh, I hate that, that, that is, so much. I, just I, hate it. I agree with you to be honest. Yeah, I hate it. Mm-hmm. At what point was it revealed? Um, it's too far fetched. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just I don't believe it. I do not believe it. What point in the book though was it when it was like the last sort of last last, like epilogue basically was like she was like, by the way, it was like a letter, it was like written from her kind of like she's like, How the fuck she knew? Like Kit got out of the shower, walked into the room, and she was like she was not fucking there. And then she looks at the letter and the letter says I was faking my shit and I now with Jesse. I'm now with Jesse my 
fucking granddaughter, by the way. Let's go. And, and that was a lot. I mean, he could have gone so many places with like, that, but he, he could just have just that. fucking ended the book with Virginia with Kit. Kit's taking care of her. She dies at 101, whatever the fuck. Yeah. I don't know why he threw in there it, she just that like, she faked it and Jesse's her granddaughter and they're in Paris. I was like, oh my God, what? I think because yeah. she sat on her butt the whole it's time. And she was like healthy, I guess. I don't know if I lived that long after that. Who's the one that's, you know, hurting now? You know? That's interesting. How do you feel about the dad being Ricky Twist? Oh, that was a huge one for me. Yeah, I didn't actually mind that one. I, I was like shook. And I was shook was like, when, sure, yeah. when he admitted that he killed the mom. The mom. Mm-hmm. And then what an ass for having your daughter go through all that and just sitting there knowing how much you were involved with all this. I hate the the way that we found out that he was Ricky. I hate the way yeah. we found out, but I didn't mind the twist. But like, I hate how she's just like running home and then yeah. <laughs> kind of just like spoon feeds it to you. Yeah. It was like, it could have been okay. a better approach. I, I, I think the same too. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much effort and so much of the book for a plot, but then there's other ones that are big plots, but it was just kind of, mm-hmm. kind of ran over it. So I was like, oh, oh, yeah. I'm kind of um, on the fence about going down a little bit on my rating. <laughs> I do this. favorite Riley say it, it is. is. <laughs> it is. But it's, uh, it I feel it. like lately, like, like with Survive the Night and then, uh, I liked House Cross Lake, so I'm not going to bring that one up. But um, Survive the Night and this one, he kind of, like, I think he feels a lot of pressure as a writer to make his plot twist very dramatic. Yeah. Like, very fucking dramatic. Well, he's known for that. And it's just almost a little too much. Like, this one would have been so solid if he just, like, like I said, just kept it the last page cut mm-hmm. and just, like... Really, there's no need to throw in those last two plotters. Like, I, I don't care. Like, I was already shook. I was at peace. Yeah. I was like, bro, <laughs> this is great. Whatever. And then he throws it. It's like, why? Like, we could have just had the five. Yeah. Plot twists. <laughs> uh, the last two were just for the dramatic factor. It's like when the show that you're watching just kills off your favorite character for drama. Yeah. Like, I hate it. The notebook. It's, it's like... <laughs> that notebook. Are your, your last two twists that you're talking about are, are Jesse being the granddaughter. Jesse being the granddaughter and that yeah. she's mobile. And that she's, yeah, she yeah. was baking. The, yeah, like, it's just, it was not needed. It's like, bro, just move on. I'm, I know. I'm done. Especially because it was the last page. Like, I was ready to close the book. I was like, wow, that yeah, was can great. You imagine the book just ends with like the house falling into the ocean. Yeah, it would then, have been a great abyss. And then yeah. it, just a little bit of an ambiguous note. Yeah, like there. it would like, have been so spooky. Ooh, yeah. Would have set the tone. I would have been okay with like the dead and Lenora like falling to their fucking Yeah, dead. if that was the end end. Yeah. Like, yeah. The end end. Yeah. Just like well, boom. And, it's, um, and the then last Virginia one. gets to have her life and And that's the only one left. I was always thinking that of that part of Yeah, like, like it just okay, it would have been Chef, like chef's kiss um mm-hmm. but lately like survive the night like there was some not believable twists in that one as well it was very dramatic i know it was supposed to be like it felt like a movie so like of course it's and it be, would like, be a good movie but i think mm-hmm. yeah survive the night would have been a better movie um but like still like i feel like this one and and the only one left and survive the night are just kind of something is like I feel like he's like feeling too much pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on him to write like the next greatest, craziest twist. Yeah, and, that's like, what know, I mean. Like, yeah, it's like you, you have to it's live too up much. Her. It's like plot twists on plot twists on plot twists right. on plot And it's like, that's that's great. Like, I he had a good couple plot twists that were sustainable and like made sense and they were good. Like, I was thrown off and I was like, damn oh, shit, yeah. like that's amazing. But I feel like that last page was just a fucking. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> And yeah. then, and th- don't put the book down because I got two more. You know, <laughs> like our tricks in life. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She's a chill, chill. He just makes you wonder what he would write next. 
Yeah. yeah, I do agree. That's why it bothered me so much. Like, it would be one thing if the dad just decided to, like, die in the house with Lenora. But, like, because, like, five seconds ago, he had been so passionate about, like, I need to kill Virginia. Virginia or Lenora? Virginia. He was trying to kill Virginia. Oh, that's right. right. And then they, like, carried her out of the house. And then Lenora was like, I'm going to go down to the house. And then he was like, me too, bestie. I know. And I was like, wait, what? So he oh. never knew. Sorry. He never knew Lenora, right? Because... When her dad came to warn her, Miss mm-hmm. Baker was like, Kent, there's a visitor here for you. I know. So she is. never knew her dad, right? I don't know. It's like, that's why it's confusing. Okay, now you're really getting me. Yeah, here. because he was the one who got Virginia pregnant, right? Yeah, Ricky. but like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Lenora didn't actually ever see him, <laughs> though, right? Like, she just heard about her, like, little affair and, like, she got pregnant. But I don't think she actually seen him or like knew him because when she's miss baker and she's like oh there's someone here to see you Mm -hmm. she doesn't know that that's her dad that that's the guy right i know i don't think so because i remember thinking i remember writing that down being like wait a damn minute (laughs) if she's if she was lenora like how did she not know him i know i don't know that's what i mean i don't know and if and if that was the case then like it's just so weird. Like, why would he be so passionate about wanting to kill Virginia in that moment and then just, like, flip a switch and be like, I'm going to die in this house with Lenora? Mm-hmm. Well, and especially after he told Kit everything. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, I think that they both felt the need to, they're in living in hell, you know, for what they've done in their life. And they just don't see a need to, they're just saying, I'm going to end it. I deserve it. I think that's where he was going with it. And so they both, because they both messed up. I mean, I life. get, like, the dad being like, I can't face you after this shit that I just told you. Yeah. To his daughter, yeah. because, like, <laughs> you just told me that you killed my mom, uh-huh. and I'm related here. I'm related uh-huh. yeah. here, and um, it's a lot. Yeah. And, like, her, what, step brother or whatever yeah. died in Canada, so, like, she actually had family. Like, mm-hmm. right, Virginia's son. I think a lot they of never got to meet because he died. So, yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah. So, like, I get the dad being like, I can't fucking face you after this shit. Yeah. You know, like, it's too much. And then, and Lenora, and then Lenora like, like, I guess it kind of makes sense because she fucking yeah, just like just fucked up her sister's life. life yeah. and, and, and now Ms. the whole and, world's going to know and Ms. Baker. who is who. And she can't <laughs> face that shit. Yeah. She yeah. can't face that shit. No. Um, but yeah, but I feel how like she kept her, how she kept her captive where she couldn't go outside, Yeah, you know, was like, God, how severe and who knew I kept on questioning what's in those pills. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's making her disabled. Yeah. I thought Miss Baker was like fucking her up. Yeah. 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 I thought she was like injecting her with some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> making her fucking paralyzed or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah. I, um. Did you like the setting the most in this book out of all the really cigarette books? Or what is your favorite, like, setting? Setting, like, like, like atmosphere, like. That house, just like. Like time zone, time, time setting. Period. <laughs> time, yeah, time period, like the house, the like house, the lake, the car, the. No, I like, think. What's your favorite? I think lock every door is still my favorite okay. atmosphere. Home Before Dark is definitely my favorite. Or house yeah. lake. I mean, like I said, they're all good. You like the so. atmosphere of House yeah. Across the Lake? I love for what now? Which House name? Across the Lake? Yeah, I the... love the like. Oh my god, you guys don't even understand how much I love like a haunted lake, haunted lake, it but is. also the trope of them like spying on their neighbors. Yeah, yeah. dude, yeah. the Knox. <laughs> that whole book, I love, 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 love that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, yeah, I love the uh, the New York trope. Yeah, love near. haunted anything haunted so home before dark yeah. was great yeah i actually like got scared in that book sometimes i was like wow but also home before dark was my first riley singer book mm-hmm. so i was like living this yeah. is how the time of my life he writes good books i know but... i agree that the times the time period didn't really come through in this no. book for me either like but i, I did like the house yeah. i did like the house. no i liked the atmosphere but i wish it was more grounded in that time period because i don't feel like i got very many 80s or 20s vibes from. i feel I like i got more 20s than 80s. yeah yeah mm-hmm. well i think that's where the story really began mm-hmm. and because they didn't reveal anything they ne- didn't it really felt need to go. very like 
shining inspired mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. the 20s vibes uh like i was just picturing the fucking hotel in the shining oh yeah when he was talking about the killings because you yeah. know like in the shining with like the axe murders and like right. all that that's all i was thinking about mm-hmm. in my head um so i feel like that kind of came through pretty good the 80s i i wouldn't have noticed it was 80s and i mm-hmm. i didn't actually i don't know where it said the 80s it probably did and i missed it but you said it was 1983 but just because um, it's a great question yeah it, it said because it i didn't getting, I think. really get so I was Dude, kept on going, oh, where are we now? You know, it's present. I'm going Taylor present Swift. time. And I'm no, like, what, what Taylor Swift song would you use for this book? No Body, No Crime. <laughs> That's for the last one, though. The last great American dice. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. I don't know all her song yes. <laughs> titles enough I don't know. to say, but that's what I was thinking. No body, no crime. Because I think when, um, and I don't know. She had a lot just, of this time. These people yeah. just vanish overnight. They didn't take their stuff. I'm of like, course they, they died. Of course they vanished. They're like, get yeah. the fuck out of there. If, they, if they're not, if they didn't I... find it, <laughs> they got killed. <laughs> all their stuff. Huh? Sure. Let's oh, not I relate think. my favorite song ever <laughs> to this book, please. <laughs> Like, yeah. Melissa the Bears. Oh, oh, got a thinker. That's actually a good, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one actually. Oh, Rich is convincing me to read House Across the Lake. Oh, oh, you got to. That's such a good book. <laughs> I loved it, Gabby. Yeah. Hated it, so take it how you will. You you look back at any of the previous books that she's read and just see it's like yeah. you got to. You got to. You know, are you lowering your rating or are you not? I don't know. I know. <laughs> like it's definitely like a three and a half. Ooh. Ow. Ooh. Yeah. I did something bad. Oh. Look what yeah. you made me do. Oh, look what you made me do. Ah. Yeah, the last one of dynasty makes sense in my brain. Mm-hmm. Ooh, out of the woods, because every time a new choice comes, you think you're out, but you're still in the thick of it. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're good. Mm-hmm. Serving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rachel is on fire. Yeah. I know that I had a marvelous time ruining everything. Yeah, that's great. It's great. It's, it's great. fitting. It's, it's fitting. Great. Um, oh my god, Castle's Crumbling. Like that. <laughs> that's great. Ooh, better than revenge. Mm. Ooh. Um, gosh, there's a lot of good don't songs. Don't blame me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, damn. Um, you so guys if, are if, quick if, with if, it. If, if he has a movie, then he's got some good. Got the soundtrack uh, figured out. Mm-hmm. And Riley Sayer is a huge Swifty, so he is so iconic. So who, who did when you when you read a book, you imagine? The characters as somebody that you know yes so i envisioned those? kit as um my main girl kate <laughs> kate from uh oh my god haunted, haunted the Bill house. house and hush and kate my kate flanagan's C- kate wife Siegel? yeah Siegel. kate siegel, kate siegel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she oh, oh my god like it's something about it uh in the first like couple chapters where it mentions that she was like a in psychology or whatever i was mm-hmm. like oh my god theo <laughs> from uh haunted Bill house i just immediately was like Kit is, is that, that's her. Yeah. Kate, yeah, Kit. Kate, Kit. Yep. Um, nobody else. I couldn't really picture anybody else. Mm-hmm. Lorna. Lenora. 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 I, I didn't picture, um, who, who was I thinking of though? Yeah, I don't know. I was just great. thinking of a scary old lady. <laughs> I didn't Well, really that was know. Mrs. Baker. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I know she that's what I mean. Like I'm really, actually, no, like, I'm actually talking about Ms. Baker. Like I was imagining yeah. some like scary old lady with like really scary red lipstick that doesn't like look good and i don't know um but as for virginia i didn't i don't know Ooh, miss baker needs to be nicole kidman Ooh, that would be dope yeah florence p would be so good for anything i love her are you a man street um the actress from the queen's gambit Mm. oh um anya taylor joy yeah she's great no that was a good movie real lenora Right? Cute. That would, yeah. I'd be dumb. Oh, yeah. Helen Ka- Kathy Bates. Helen like Mirren's so good. Kathy Bates is uh, yeah, Miss Kathy Baker. Bates. Kathy Bates mm-hmm. is Miss Baker. She's mm-hmm. good. She, that would be great. <laughs> Evil is so, so, Riley, we're, we're getting the music and the people yeah, already in the up cast. For you. Don't worry. We're good. <laughs> Golden. Ready to go. Um, uh, oh, whoops. Okay. Um, before we end this live show, we're coming up on almost an hour. I would just love to know, um, for anybody who is looking for something similar, if you have any like books, movies, or TV shows that you would compare this to, like if you enjoyed this, you should check out this because they have like similar vibes or anything like that. Um, if you guys have anything in the chat you uh, want to mention, but also, you know, oh, I love Sarah Paulson. Oh, yes, love, love, love. She'd be oh, great. Yeah. She'd be so good. 
Um, but yeah, I did see some people comparing this to Verity, which I would agree. You read Verity, right? By Colleen Hoover. It's the one where she's uh she everyone's saying Verity is unresponsive and then she goes to like write the book for her as a ghostwriter with her husband. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like a romance between how she's falling for Verity's husband. There you go. She's, yeah, I would say oh. Verity for sure. Yeah. I could see that. Mm -hmm. Another another good uh, a writing retreat. Oh. oh, I love the writing retreat. Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca is a pretty. I, I've seen a lot of people compare it to Rebecca because of the gothic vibes. Yeah, of. gothic. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything to compare this to. I know. I did see a lot of other friends too compare this to like. Let um, me stick it. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, like a series of unfortunate events because of the like crumbling house kind of vibes. Yeah. Um, but then also I, I did see a lot of friends compare this to the, the visit. Of the Haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, yeah. Um, which I kind of see, but also, mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know. I think it's a little different. Um, oh, yeah. House on the Cliff vibes were in Daisy Darker a little bit, too. Um, oh, that's a long time ago. Oh, you did. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. I feel like, um, like, Haunting of Bly Manor, kind of, but she's, like, a nanny versus a caretaker. Uh -huh. kind of different. Yeah. Um, Jane Eyre. Yeah, oh, the, the Black Mirror episode of Miley Cyrus. I can see that. Hmm. I can see it. Hmm. Well, I think it's good Dark Mirror kind of a, you know, kind of a vibe. Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, hmm. Interesting. If it was more ambiguous, I would have said it felt like a Twilight Zone. But Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Not the visit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the movie's a trip. It's a trip. <laughs> Kidding. A trip. Kidding. <laughs> well, cool. Um, did you guys have anything else that we haven't talked about that you would like to mention before we wrap things up? Do we have anything else? So I think I've touched on everything that I wanted to touch on. Um, uh, are your ratings any different now, like after this conversation? Or do you still gosh. are you strongly passionate feeling the same way? I think I'm <sighs> three and a half. I, I'm thinking, you know, half a star down. I, I, yeah. More talk about the twists that don't. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but see, I, I have to still give it the same because I still, it still hit me that way it did, mm -hmm. even though it's been talked about. I really haven't seen, and not reading a lot, I don't get a lot of that, you know, like, it, it, I've read this before, I know what the trope and blah, blah. No. Yeah. So that's for me is why I give it. I was intrigued. I finished a 400 page book <laughs> in like a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, wow, Katie. Oh. Wow. Dropping down to a 3.25 from a five. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I think I am still giving it four because it's like I had fun with it. It's a little ridiculous and I have some issues with it, but like mm -hmm. I'm still fine at a four star. Like I still have mostly fond memories of this reading experience. Mm -hmm. 2.5. So, so yeah. Dropping from a three and a half to a three. I just remember like reading it. Still a two. And I remember being like, Still. I do not think Gabby's gonna like this book. <laughs> and I remember being like, Do I actually like this book? Or am I more? Because like Gabby was telling me a lot of hype from like everybody on YouTube and like all around being like, Oh my God, everybody loves it. Everybody's saying it's a favorite. Blah, blah, blah. So like, when I was reading, I was like, do I actually like this? Or am I, like, thinking about everybody else's hype? Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't accurately, like, tell if I was actually enjoying it or believing the book or, like, you know, whatever. I, I kept thinking about, like, oh, like, what is everybody else thinking? Right. Or, well, you girls, you know, it's like I, I can tell when you're liking something and I'm like, how much do they like it? But usually it's like if they say they like something, it's – Otherwise, they wouldn't say, yeah. you know, because I know that part, you know. Uh, I definitely liked some of the twists. Um, I think that's why I still gave it, like, a good amount of stars. But I think, like, for the most part, like, I didn't really care for it, like, in the beginning. Well, the and then the last page. So, it's, like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's hard for me to, like, judge it because, like, at the same time, I would recommend this to other people. This is probably a visual. 140 pages two tabs yeah the rest of the book <laughs> yeah yeah it was a slow start slow start yeah but... have any desires or hopes for sager's next book 
a lot of hopes and desires. And I, I hope, hope he does the spooky vibe. I hope still. it's a paranormal twist. I think love it. Um, bad. Yeah, I'll read anything. It's he got writes. a house on it. It's got to have a house. <laughs> this house was. I, I I loved how it wove in and out of the. You know, it just because you kind of forget. You knew it was like, but the slipping down the slope. Mm -hmm. You know. And the stairs and the blood stains and the <laughs> fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so um, yeah, for the month of August, we will be reading a twisted love story by Samantha Downing. We'll be combining with the Literally Dead Book Club for one Ooh. huge live show experience. Uh, that's right. Should Love be that. a very fun time. Should that's be awesome. should be great. So um oh, that would be cool with KK. To get, yeah. <laughs> that would be cool to get a 70s era one because he's he's done 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did hear there's already a premise, I think, for his next book. It's about a boy who disappeared 30 years ago. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I, I love be, disappearing things. Yeah. I think it'll be a I think it'll be a fun time. So and there's a big question mark. It's a yeah, good okay. read. Gives a hint about his next book at the end of the mm -hmm. Barnes Noble exclusive. Mm -hmm. There's always something in the Barnes Noble exclusive, and I don't ever know because I don't get it at Barnes Noble. So yeah, our futuristic book for Miley Sager would be interesting. Like mm -hmm. a like a little bit of a sci-fi thing going yeah. on. That'd be stretching it. I think know? he likes past. Mm -hmm. He likes yeah. doing past. Because it's like, you know, how it goes from. There's a story from the past. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much filler there. And it's also, too. There's something like, that's so creepy, though, about yeah. past. Yeah. You know? Because you already know. It's like a lot of history. And... Oh, wait. It's actually going to be a male narrator? No way. I well, can't. From I a can't guy's even... perspective? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that what gonna be, is that gonna be good holy shit one star no, I'm just <laughs> a man written about a man zero stars mm -hmm. i'm just kidding Ooh, no that'll yeah. be interesting okay well that'll be different it'll be different yeah so totally. i mean hopefully it'll come out next summer and we can just do the same thing next July. i never even that's realized nice. that's probably why i really like really sticker books is because it's a girl's <laughs> yeah perspective. i didn't even realize that it's interesting. True. I mean, people have been asking him to write from a man's point of view for years because they're always like, I have an issue with the way that you write women or whatever. So like, I'm just curious. I'm just curious if he felt pressured to write a man's point of view. So this or... one didn't reveal that part, did it for you? I mean, how he made the girls, you know, reveal. strong. I don't mind the way he writes women for the most part. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit in his last two books, but like, I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, he's, he's, yeah, that's true. I think each time he, for me, outdoes himself. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be hard when you're into that kind of stuff to constantly keep it going. Mm -hmm. Where people are, you know, just going, well, that's unique. I didn't think of that. Mm -hmm. But his twists were definitely worth I still name. think that, like, he's still such, a, like, a solid writer for me. Like, I always read his books. Mm -hmm. I'll always gravitate <laughs> towards them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, his writing is just really good. Yeah, it's good paced for the most part, and you you really feel like you're in there, mm -hmm. like part of the. Uh, yeah. I well, awesome! It. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Thank you for reading along with <clears> us <throat> this month. I really do appreciate it. Um, this was fun. I love having this tradition of you yeah. know having my mom, it's my fun. sister on for the Riley Sager. It's a fun the time. mom and sister. Yeah. yeah. If you are uh, curious, I do have book troop live shows from the past for his previous two books mm -hmm. with these two. Mm -hmm. So if you'd like to check those out, um, they're available on my channel to watch. And um, thank you so much, to everybody who read along with us this month and who that joined was us. Fun. That was a good read. Yeah, it was a I fun time. It was, good... it was a good discussion book yeah, for it was, sure. It wasn't DNF. <laughs> Um, this no, one was not. a good one. Yeah, so, bye, Rupert. <laughs> <laughs> bye. We'll see you next time.